Lesson 2. Memory Addresses The memory inside of a typical computer consists of bite-sized memory locations. Each of these locations in memory can be addressed with a single number, much like an array index. In fact, we can think of memory as a giant array of bytes. For illustration, we are going to use some C++ console programs, which we will make available on the lesson page for this video at SOAX.net. If you would like some additional background on C++, watch our C++ console videos. In our first program, we demonstrate how to display a simple memory address. First, we declare a char type variable and assign it the value x. Then we output the memory address of the variable. To do this, we use the address of operator to get the address and then cast the char pointer to an int pointer. The cast is needed because the Cout stream treats char pointers as strings instead of memory addresses. If we press Ctrl and F5 to execute this program, we see the address of the memory location. Note that the memory address varies when we execute the program multiple times, so if you run the program, you're likely to get a different number for the address. Also, you may have noticed that the address contains letters. This is because the address is displayed in hexadecimal by default. If you want to see the address in decimal, you can cast it to an int like this. Now when we execute the code, we see the address in hexadecimal followed by the decimal value conversion. To avoid confusion though, we will use hexadecimal for our memory addresses. In this next program, we create an array of characters to show the layout of multiple entries in memory. The char data type is one byte in length, so each char takes up one memory location. At the start of the program, we declare an array of chars filled with the string soax.net. This creates an array of nine characters, the eight characters of the string, plus a null terminator to signal the end of the string. Next, we have a loop that runs through the entries of the array and outputs the memory address and the value of each character with three different representations. First, we output the bits using a function that we wrote called output bits. This function takes a char value and prints out its value in binary using ones and zeros. Then we output the character representation. This is an x, for instance, for the first character. Finally, we output the decimal value of the character by casting the char value to an integer. The binary representation, the character, and the decimal value all represent the value of the char variable. The connection between the binary representation and the decimal value should be clear from our prior video. However, the character representation is a little different. In the early days of computers, a key code was developed to assign each keyboard character a numerical value between 0 and 127. These values remain with us today and are called ASCII. Please consult the ASCII table in the reference section on our website to see how characters are represented. Executing the program, we see four representations for each of the nine entries of our array. First, we have the address of the character entry. Next, we have the binary representation of the character. The binary representation is what is actually stored at the address. After the binary value, we have the char value or the ASCII character for this value. Finally, we have the decimal value of the entry. To further stress the point, the binary char and decimal values are just different representations for the character. So we only have two different values here, the memory address and the value that is stored at the address. However, we want to show these three representations of the character value because you will often see them used interchangeably and it is important to understand that the value of these is the same no matter which representation we use. Notice, furthermore, that the array entries exist in consecutive memory addresses. This is exactly what we expect with an array. Lastly, we want to point out that the final value of the array is zero, and this is added to the array automatically to signal the end of the string. Notice that the value zero has no visible character representation.